Hey guys, uh, second review of the day, and this is Airfix's 148th Hawker Hurricane Mark 1. And as we all know, this was the stable mate of the Spitfire during the Battle of Britain. And, uh, sorry, just going to put this in the flight mode a minute. Uh, so we can get only interrupted. And uh, a very iconic aircraft, served valiantly through all the sorts of campaigns around the world uh, during the Second World War, more specifically remembered for the Battle of Britain, uh, where this aircraft was really the underdog of the two, and basically uh, could take a lot more damage as well because of its uh, part metal part uh, fabric re uh, construction and it was designed by Sir Sidney Cam who had done a very stable um, history of Hawker fighter aircraft and this believe it or not was the first monoplane fighter to enter the RAF's um, service in around about 1937. Uh, I think she first flew around about 1935 and um, Originally it was with the two pitch um, blade propeller and then it on, obviously moved on to the three blade de Havilland propped aircraft uh, around about sort of early, late 39, early 1940. Um, fought very well out in the Battle of France. Unfortunately there weren't enough numbers of aircraft so they were soon overwhelmed obviously with the tactics of the Blitzkrieg. And... Um, Unfortunately, some were left behind and destroyed. Uh, though they supplied some to Belgium and they were completely wiped out uh, during the uh, Blitzkrieg. Um, but it served valiantly during the Battle of Britain alongside the Spitfire, uh, but was in far more uh, numbers of production and service than the Spitfire and actually was used more generally for intercepting the bombers. Um, but uh, it, it went on to be a very successful night fighter and fighter bomber and was used out in the Pacific and uh, in North Africa and uh, also and after the war was used in a few air races. Um, and there are still a number of them um, preserved flying today. I think the Battle of Britain flight has two and about three or four have since been renovated and taken to the air and I think there's a few more still being renovated to airworthy condition um, so a very iconic aircraft indeed and to be honest out of all out of the two I said I would say the Hurricane is my favorite um, obviously because of its history and it could take a lot more punishment um, and uh, also it was a, a, a used by Douglas Barner in 242 squadron uh, who ended up uh, using the big wings concept, as we all know, and a few other well-known air races, such as um, Nicholson, who ended up having a posthumous VC. Um, and uh, who else can I think of? And Stanford, um, Bob Stanford Tuck as well, uh, who became another well-known air racer towards the end of the Battle of Britain, using the Hurricane. Um, and obviously Francis Czech, who is, I, th I think he's the one depicted on the box art, um, who was a high scoring ace during the Battle of Britain period. And as I say, 303 Squadron was the highest scoring squadron during the uh, Battle of Britain itself. Um, and obviously later on you had the Mark IIc, the Mark IV, etc. Um, but... Um, a very lovely aircraft indeed. Anyway, I'm not going to babble on. What we'll do is get on with the inbox review itself. As you can see here, you've got the inbox art review of a typical scene taken during the Battle of Britain where it's in. Um, Francis II and his squadron are intercepting a Kampfkirchwader of um, Heinkels, uh somewhere over southern England. And on the box itself, you've got the two colour um, color options, as you can see there. And the kit number for this, incidentally, is AO5127A. That's AO5127A. Got a little bit of um, information on the side here in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 languages. And then box art on the side. A little bit of history about the aircraft itself. 
and obviously your two colour call outs that you've got on the box as well as some of the paints and equipment that you can get from Humbrol although I don't use Humbrol, I tend to use mostly Tamiya uh, so yeah um, I had built this aircraft before on a previous release beautiful kit um, comes in one big bag as is per the norm with Airfix um, it's still sealed believe it or not so that's your bag of sprues and then obviously you've got your in decals and then your ordinary sort of paper pamphlet instruction sheet which you see here um, right the only thing I've forgotten is I've left my scissors out the back so I'm gonna have to go out and get them again <laughs> Sorry, I won't be able to get Right, I'm back again guys, sorry about that, it's the fourth time I've done that, I must remember to bring them in next time. Right, a little bit of information about the construction and the history of the aircraft, and you've got that in English, French, Dutch, Spanish, and I don't know what the SV stands for, but never mind. Um, opening it up. Again, some more pointers and symbols there during the construction. Um, the red is indicated do not cement, so there you go, that's what that means. First up, you've actually got the seat itself, and obviously um, the bulkhead at the back there. And, and then you've basically got the actual lower frame to put together for the undercarriage, and it's basically telling you the degree to put it at. Then the lower floor, that is fitted to the actual frame. And then obviously you've got frame, the actual framework of the cockpit itself to put uh, together. Um, then obviously what goes down next is the control lever, as you can see there. And then that fits into the main frame. And then you've got the pudder foot pedals which go in. Second part of the framework goes together. Seat goes in. And then obviously you've got some of the fluid link with the oxygen bottle for the undercarriage bay. And then if you want to, you can actually assemble and paint the pilot and put him in. Okay. I'm not going to do that. And then obviously you've got the lower framework of the interior of the undercarriage bay, which you can see there. More of it there. Uh, then the actual framework and the bulkheads for the undercarriage bay go onto the lower part. The wing, you put your landing light in. And the other one on the opposite side of the wing and obviously you've got the option here as is on the previous release you can leave the under you can leave the gun bays open for display if you want to but you'd have to cut them out okay in this instance um i might leave one open i don't know so it's being rearmed i don't know if you're going to keep them open and show the guns you obviously you put you get machine guns into the gun bay itself Ammunition pack goes in, side bulkheads go in, a little bit of framework goes in for holding the machine guns, cross frame goes in, another cross frame goes in, and that's basically your job done, and also on the opposite side itself. Okay. That's to say, that's just an option if you want to open that up. Again, the two wing halves go together, as you can see there. And then obviously you put the control panel in and the engine bulkhead, adding a decal for the en um, engine panel, if you so, so wish. I didn't last so to be honest with you, I just kept it plain, uh, put clear on the actual bezels as though it was glass and left it at that. Um, I'll probably do the same again. And you also got the option of cutting out the side panel to get into the cockpit if you want to have it open, which I'll probably do. And then put the actual main fuselage onto the wings, as it were. Okay. And then obviously you put the under part of the nose in for the engine column. And the rear part of the fuselage on the bottom goes on. Elevators go onto the wings. You can have them up or down. Um, so it's entirely your option. Uh, assembly of the tailplanes. 
and then put the rudder and the actual rear tail planes on. Um, construction of the main central radiator, which goes underneath the wing on the main part, the fuselage. Braces go in on obviously the air filter as well, and the main air filter on the radiator goes on the front there as two. Then put your rear undercarriage leg on, and if you want it in the up position with the aircraft in flight, add it with the doors closed. Or alternately, assemble the undercarriage legs as is indicated here. Put it into the undercarriage bay with part of the suspension con going in, and then obviously you fit the main uh, lubricant hole. Oh, I don't know, it's part of the assembly anyway. Um, fit them into the undercarriage bays, put the tyres on, the wheel hubs on, outer legs go in onto the undercarriage legs, pitot tube goes on, then fit the radiators on the engine, and then obviously you assemble the propeller and put it onto the nose hub there. And then obviously the last thing to, well, one of the last things to do is assemble and fit the gun sight, okay, into the cockpit, and then if we have a look here, you can either have the cockpit open or closed. I'm probably going to have mine open. Aerial goes on, landing lights go in, as it were. And then obviously, um, if you want the um, wing uh, armour sections open, you can. If not, just glue them in. And then that's it. Your kit is assembled. Now the first option is of Flight Sergeant Tandus Andrusowski, uh, 303 Polish Squadron, Royal Air Force Northolt, September 27th, 1940. And you can see it's got the red band on the back there to notify it's a Polish squadron. Standard light aircraft grey, dark green, sky colour scheme with a black nose. Okay, and then on the back, you've got another one. Uh, this is quite a distinctive colour scheme. Uh, it's aircraft owned by Flight Lieutenant Ian Richard Widge Gleed, 87 Squadron, Royal Air Force, Exeter, Devon, England, August 1940. Now that's got a red spinner on with a red flash on the nose, which is quite a nice colour scheme. And again, it's the standard dark earth, dark green with sky undersurfaces. So yes, very nice indeed. Right. Let's have a look at the kit itself. Now I'm going to have to undo the bag and then we'll take the sprues out one by one. So I'm just going to open the bag with scissors and then take the sprues out. Right. Okay. Right, first off, the block is the actually upper wing again lovely right it's panel line detail as you can see honey if you want the gun bays open you're going to have to cut them open with a um scalpel um so as i say i might possibly do that when i get around to building this as a basis of a diorama part of the floor panels there as you can see and the rear bulkhead bulletproof bulkhead for the pilot to protect the pilot Again, nice detail on there with the rivets, etc. Um, and obviously, I'm quite sure where that other one is, but there you go. Unfortunately, there are some sort of weld seams on it, but to be honest with you, you're not going to know them, so it won't really matter. But again, nice detail. And on the rear elevators here, the rear tail planes, I love the fabric effect on it. They've really caught that really well. So, very nice indeed. Right, next up. Is your fuselage halves. Again, lovely recess panel line detail. And obviously you've got the lovely fabric effect on the rear of the aircraft there. So, they've caught that extremely well. And that's beautiful. There's your prop. You've got one of two options here, so you may have to do your re um, research on that. And then obviously you've got your tail planes, which have got a lovely sort of stressed fabric effect on them as well. And then up here is part of the interior fuselage frame. So very nice indeed. Next up, 
Um, you've got the actual pilot here, which is lovely casting on there. I'll have to say it's better than the old castings you used to get in the Airflux kits. Um, but I'm not going to put him in. Uh, you've got the aerial, you've got part of the interior fuselage here, oxygen bottles. That is your covers for your ammunition bays. Obviously, you've got the interior there. I don't know if that's part of the infused large interior. And then obviously undercarriage bay legs, beautiful detail there. Again, more interior parts for the gun bay. And you've got the option of two different noses, as you can see there. And there's your tires. And the thing I like with those, they're weighted as well, as you can see there. Uh, various lump and bumps, radiator grills, nice level of detail on them and the actual control panel I wouldn't think you'd need to put a decal on it to be honest um, as I say just paint it black dry brush it and then basically use some clear into the bezels to give it that sort of sense of glass in there and then obviously there's your radiator intake air grill which is here um, interior frame for your gun bays rudder pedals there pitot tubes um, this is for a trop version now no airfix have actually got a trop version out so I would disregard this you're not going to need this that's the front part of the nose the seat um, part of the lower part of the floor and again you've got your machine guns here which are beautifully detailed I have to say and uh, rear tail wheel Yes, all well and good. Beautiful detail on there, guys. And then finally, as regards the plastic sprues, you've got the lower part of the wing. Again, you can see where the machine guns go if you want to have the gun bay open. Um, and again, on the rudder, if I get it round the other way, nice stress skin effect on it as well. And you've got more wheels. I don't know why you've got more wheels on there but there you go you've got more wheels yeah then part of the interior framework for the undercarriage bay which is beautifully detailed i have to say guys and then obviously you've got your elevators for your wings which are nicely sort of given that stressed effect with uh, the fabric effects on it it's beautiful and part of the interior walls for the undercarriage bay and then obviously you've got your wheels covers for your wheels as well and then beautifully reproduced and then obviously you've got the bottom part of the wing again beautiful recess panel on detail there as well all right and finally there's your glass now i'm not going to take this out of the bag but it is beautifully clear as you can see there and I think in there somewhere is a gun sight. Um, so you've got the option of two canopies. One you can use as closed, which I think is that one. That one's for when you've got it open. And obviously you've got your um, landing lights on that. And then finally, you've got your decals. And they are produced by Cartograph. And they should bed down beautifully. You even got the flash for the nose there. So you haven't got to mask it off and do it yourself. So, yes, very nice indeed. And obviously you've got a decal there in case you just want to put it on the control panel. But that's up to you. Uh, but, uh, again, beautifully reproduced. And I basically have built this kit before and it builds into a beautiful representation of the Hurricane, I have to say. Um, can't fault it. I really can't. I mean, uh, I mean, the old kit was a bit basic. There was no interior detail. Um, but... Ever since uh, they got taken over uh, by Humbrol and they've been going to museums and scanning aircraft and recadding them, the detail is just phenomenal. And uh, every time they bring out Hurricane 1, I have to get one. And I can't wait to build this baby because it is such a lovely kit to build. Um, the only thing I did find was when you actually did the interior framework, the fit wasn't all that good. So you did have to do some sanding here and there. But basically, it went together like no one's business. Um, it's a beautifully produced kit once it's made. And uh, I can't fault it. I really can't. And as I say, I can't wait to build this one again. As at the moment, I'm just basically trying to get sprues back in the bag. Um... 
yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful kit, and it's one of the best Hurricanes out there on the market, I have to say. Um, so if you get the chance, I have a good 148 Hurricane, or Hurricane 1, Hurricane 2, whatever, get an Airfix one. Uh, they are beautiful, and I heartily, heartily recommend them. Um, so, yeah. As I say, I'm not sure if this kit is still available, um, so I would check and see if it's on the Airfix's inventory. I don't think it is now. I think they've phased this particular one out now. Um, in fact, one of them I ordered through, unfortunately, the cockpit's missing on it, so I'm going to have to see if I can get a hold of a spare one with them once we come out of lockdown, because uh, obviously their, their staff is going to be on furlough at the moment, so there won't be anybody at the factory. Um, so, yeah um can't recommend it enough it's a lovely lovely kit to build it really is and as i say once it's built it does a beautiful representation of the hurricane one uh so there you go anyway hope you enjoyed this second inbox review of the day uh so until then uh stay safe wear a mask wash your hands keep set two meter distance and uh, most importantly think of your loved ones and keep in contact with them anyway until the next time, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I will speak to you soon.